I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hi, I'm Luke Ryan for JoeBlow.com and welcome to Movie Endings Explained, where we'll be taking a look at some of the more ambiguous and discussed movie endings that have left audiences debating their true meaning long after the credits have rolled. In 2016, Denis Villeneuve's latest film Arrival was released, to great commercial success and critical acclaim. The film was based on the 1998 novella The Story of Your Life, written by Ted Chiang. Before we even dive into the story of Arrival and explore its ending, we need to take a look at its beginning. The beginning that is key to the end. We open with narration from our main character, Louise Banks, played by Amy Adams. I used to think this was the beginning of your story. Memory is a strange thing. It doesn't work like I thought it did. We are so bound by time, by its order. From here, we see an emotional and heart-wrenching montage of Louise raising her daughter, Hannah, who becomes ill as a teenager and passes away. This prologue of sorts ends with a very telling line from Louise. But now I'm not so sure I believe in beginnings and endings. That line is an important element of what makes Arrival tick, as the beginning of the story is just as vital as its ending. In a way, it's almost a clue. But the true brilliance of Arrival is how the reveal is stripped away as the film progresses to its finale. Louise is a linguist, a language specialist, who is called by the government to help them research a giant alien spacecraft that has arrived on Earth, one of 12 around the entire globe. She is also joined by physicist Ian Donnelly, played by Jeremy Renner, and they both endeavor to understand the alien creatures on board the ship. They dub the aliens heptopods, and discover that their language is an incredibly dense and complex one comprised of circular symbols. The emphasis of language is another extremely important facet of Arrival, whether it's commenting on the dangers of communication lost in translation, or whether it's addressing the mind-bending element that begins to change Louise throughout the film. She begins to see flashbacks of her daughter as she studies the alien language, but the more she learns of the circular symbols, the deeper she feels connected to those flashbacks. The government begin to get antsy about the alien visitors, particularly over talk of a weapon that scares a lot of people around the world, and rogue soldiers plant a bomb inside the ship, which drastically damages the relations between the two parties and mortally wounds one of the heptopods. The world's leaders agree to demand that the heptopods leave Earth in 24 hours or else they will attack, and Louise decides to go into the ship alone to talk with the surviving alien. It explains to Louise that they have come to Earth to help humanity, and that the weapon is in fact a gift. In 3,000 years, the heptopods will return when they know that they will need the help of humanity. They know this because the heptopods are not bound to the linearity of time. The gift is their language, and their language opens time, as the heptopod puts it. This is when we learn the truth about Louise's daughter, Hannah. Throughout the film, we see her flashbacks to her daughter's life, but Louise asks the heptopod, who is the child? Earlier in the film, one of Louise's flashbacks was of her daughter showing her a drawing she had done in school. And who are those two people? It's you and Dad. The show is called Mommy and Daddy Talk to Animals. As she said, Mommy and Daddy Talk to Animals. She's describing what Louise did with the heptopods. At this point, it is made clear that Louise's daughter was never shown in flashback, but perhaps in flash forward 
as Hannah is to be born after the events of the arrival of the heptapods. But framing it or breaking it down as a flash forward is almost going against the real idea of the story, which is that the heptapods language doesn't allow the aliens to see into the future or the past, but to see and exist in every moment of time, fluid and non-linear. The more that Louise learned their language, or the weapon, or again you could call it the gift, she saw more of Hannah, and starts to begin the experience of perceiving time in a completely different way. Now there is an actual theory known as the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, or linguistic relativity, that proposes that our perception of time itself is tied completely, or at least partially, to our language. Louise begins to understand that the child she saw was her own daughter, a daughter that has yet to be born, and that she would know her death was inevitable. We also learn why Louise named her daughter Hannah. Your name is very special because it is a palindrome. It reads the same forward and backward. She names her daughter with a palindrome, something that is the same forwards and backwards, which is exactly how her experience of perceiving time would be at that moment. At the beginning of the film when she says, I don't believe in beginnings or endings anymore, it all ties in to this palindromic idea. In the original short story, the emphasis is purely on Louise's discovery and experience of this new language and perception of time, and also that she decides to have Hannah despite knowing her fate. The idea of free will, and whether we really have control of our own destiny, is a central theme to the story. In The Story of Your Life, it remains personal, intimate, and heartbreaking. But in Arrival, we have the added element of China preparing to attack the ship, which ratchets up a big attention, where Louise accesses a point in time in the future in which she meets General Shang, the man responsible for deciding to attack the heptapods. He thanks her for convincing him to stand down when she called his private number and recited to him his wife's dying words. Now, 18 months ago, you did something remarkable. Something not even my superior has done. What's that? You changed my mind. You're the reason for this unification. All because you reached out to me on my private number. Your private number, General, I, I don't know your private number. The suggestion here when Shang shows her his private number is that Louise does go on to teach the world what she dubs the universal language, and that Shang had also at that point begun to perceive time differently and knew that she had to see his private number and that she had to be told his wife's last words. The past informs the future, the future saves the past, and all points of time flow through the present. According to the screenwriter of Arrival, the translated final words of Shang's wife were, In war, there are no winners, only widows. The heptapod ships leave Earth, having imparted what Louise calls the tool, and then we learn that Ian would go on to be the father of Hannah, and the reason he left Louise was because she didn't initially tell him their daughter's inevitable fate. The power of the story, of Louise's story, is that she doesn't change her future. She doesn't free herself of the pain of Hannah's death, because to have never had Hannah at all would also rob her of the beauty of her daughter's life. It's an incredibly hard decision to ever have to comprehend making if you were in the same position. Originally, in earlier drafts of the script, the gift from the heptapods was actually to be blueprints to build an interstellar ship, like an Ark. Once Christopher Nolan's Interstellar was released, they decided to scrap the idea for obvious reasons, instead focusing on the power of language, and an idea that I think is far more personal and powerful. Ultimately, Arrival is about one woman's choice, more than it is about the power of language, and that her decision isn't the right choice or the wrong choice. It's simply her choice. She embraces it, the happiness and the pain. 
Though you could argue that if she saw Hannah as she began to perceive time in a non-linear fashion, that she was always going to be born, and that there was no other way. Her choice had already been made, instinctually. That is the true paradox of the film, because it builds to an emotional climax of a woman deciding to have a child, knowing she will die young. But at the same time, it had to happen if Louise had already experienced memories from the future. But I like to interpret this quandary quite simply. Louise was always going to be the type of person who could make that difficult choice, and that there was only ever one way. She was going to choose love. What did you think of the ending, and indeed the beginning, of the palindromic arrival? Do you think the film promotes the idea of free will, or condemns it? Was Louise's choice ever truly in her own hands, or predetermined by fate? Let us know down below, and as always, thanks for watching.